Hi, I'm Nathan Williamson. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Transition Talk. Now, if you've tuned in to our previous episodes, which you can, by the way, find on our YouTube channel by searching Veterans Benefits Administration, you know I'm a Navy veteran. But I'm proud to also say I'm a student veteran. It was my GI Bill benefits provided to me by the VA that allowed me to achieve my personal higher education goals. Uh, you know, my GI Bill allowed me to go to Johnson Community College in Smithfield, North Carolina, as well as George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. That's why today it is a personal honor to have Ms. Charmaine Bogue, Executive Director of VA's Education Service with us. Hi, Charmaine. Hi, Nate. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. All right, Charmaine, well, we want to jump right into this. Uh, you know, June 22nd marks the 76th anniversary of the GI Bill. Could you tell us a little bit about the history of the GI Bill and its impact today? Great question, Nate. Um, yes, we are celebrating the 76th anniversary. Um, we will have a series of events for the 76th anniversary. Last year, we celebrated the 75th anniversary, and definitely it was a really good time. I will tell you that Harry W. Colmary, uh, when he had this simple idea 75 years ago that when service members return um, and they should be entitled to education benefits, a home loan and, and medical benefits, um, I, I don't think he believed that it would have evolved to this program that it is today. Today, we serve nearly 1 million individuals uh, per year across five education programs, and we pay out $12 billion. You know, when this program first started out, it was just a simple monthly stipend given to students to help them in their education journey. And today, we can pay the full gamut from a monthly housing allowance to tuition and fees, as well as a book and supply stipend. It's just really an amazing benefit. In addition to, you know, talking about how much we pay out, we also we afford opportunities for individuals across various education programs, you know, from on the job training, apprenticeship programs, two year, four year degree programs, master's degrees, PhD level programs, you really can um, utilize your benefits across various education programs. And there's so many opportunities out there that's available to individuals. I'm really just proud of this program and how it's evolved over the last 75 years. So Charmaine, that history, that legacy is incredible. Going back to today though, what resources are available to veterans or, or service members or family members, dependents that are considering to use their GI Bill? The resources that we have for individuals today has really evolved. So we have one item called the GI Bill Comparison Tool. The GI Bill Comparison Tool is available on our GI Bill website. And the GI Bill Comparison Tool allows for any individual to go in and see all the VA approved schools. We actually have over 16,000 VA approved schools representing over 400,000 VA approved programs in our space. So you can understand that for an individual thinking about their educational goals, where they want to go to school, that can be a tremendous um, research effort for folks. So we wanted to be able to provide a one-stop shop for our students to be able to go in and be able to see the schools, see the type of programs that's available to them, tuition and fees associated with their program, what type of resources are available on site for students. That is all available on our GI Bill comparison tool. In addition, we also have our GI Bill website that I just mentioned. We have a host of information um, on our website that's available regarding the different education programs that are out there for individuals, as well as any latest updates and changes to our program. I will tell you we're pretty active on social media. Uh, we have a dedicated GI Bill Facebook page, which is a great resource for students. We continually post on a daily basis about changes in our program and in our space. And another avenue that I'll mention is our dedicated education call center. We have over 300 employees in our Muskogee, Oklahoma office who are answering calls day in and day out to make sure that they help individuals through their education benefits. So Charmaine, I just find it incredible the way you guys are doing outreach to our student veterans. But you mentioned Harry Colmary, so I wanna go back to that a little bit. A couple of years ago, there was a law passed, uh, the, the Colmary Act, uh, we call it the Forever GI Bill. Could you tell us a little bit about what VA has been doing to implement this law? Yes, that's a good question. So for the last three years, we've been implementing the Harry W. Colmary Veterans Educational Assistance Act that passed in 2017. And that legislation had sweeping changes in there. I will tell you the most significant changes we saw prior to that was post 9-11 GI Bill itself. Well, Harry W. Colmary Act actually contained 34 pieces of uh, provisions within that law. 
And out of those 34, 31 impacted the space of education. It gave us the opportunity to expand existing programs as well as create new benefits, as well as create new programs for individuals. And a few examples of that is we have a vet tech program, which is a five-year pilot program focused on the IT field. And it ties it all together nicely between training and employment for our veterans. Then we also have the STEM scholarship program. Individuals that are burning hot on their entitlement, we're able to help them out in their last year to really cross the finish line in their STEM related degree programs, offering up to additional nine months of benefits. Some other great benefits that came out of the Comaria Act is also allowing uh, Purple Heart recipients who are at the, um, who have served after post 11 GI Bill, we can actually now pay them at the 100% benefit level regardless of their service time. There's just some really amazing items that came out of that particular provision. And we're really excited that the last two years that we've really been able to move forward in the education space and evolve for our student veterans. Okay, that's great. And uh, you know, again, I've got to remind our viewers, uh, as you're going down, jot down the resources Charmaine has given you. When we're done with this, go check them out. Make it a family affair. Be involved in your own uh, education decisions. Now, Charmaine, I want to go back. You mentioned outreach. Over the past year, you and other VA leaders have been visiting schools all across the country. Can you tell me why you guys are doing this school tour? <laughs> you know, Nate, that's a good question. I will tell you, um, last year was an interesting roller coaster ride for education. You know, we strive to evolve in our space. And what we were hearing from our stakeholders is, you know, hey, you need to get out and about and hear more from the students, hear more from the schools, hear more from companies about the GI Bill, its impact on society and how to evolve for the future. And that's what we did. We went out and about across the nation to visit various schools, companies, as well as students um, to talk about the GI Bill program. And we had some really great stories and really great dialogue with individuals across the nation. We were able to connect with students who said, you know, this program has been amazing for me. I would not have been able to afford, be afforded the opportunities that I've been, been available to me if I didn't have the GI Bill. You know, also we've heard individuals say, because of the GI Bill, now I'm working at Microsoft or Google or other companies where I'm able to provide for my family. It's just really a tremendous benefit that we believe has really given 10 times over back to our nation. So Charmaine, uh, you know, there's something that you mention all the time, I, I hear you say it, and that is a school certifying official. Can you explain what that is and why it should be important to our student veterans? You know, um, I've said it on the, on the school tour for the last year and I'll continue to beat this drum. Our school certifying officials are our front line. Frontline folks, they really are the folks that are helping our student veterans through their educational goals. They're actually not VA employees. Um, and it's interesting because students many times mistake our school certifying officials for VA employees, but they're actually tied to the school. They're individuals who actually assist student veterans with enrolling in programs and making sure that their information is certified to VA each and every semester. Also, they help them map out how to maximize their benefits. You know, it's really important for us to make sure that school certifying officials have the resources and knowledge that they need in order to help students because many times they may not be able to um, have time to pick up the phone to call VA or they <clears throat> So they go straight to their school certifying official in order to get information right there because they're right there on campus or they have their school certifying officials direct email. So we definitely try to make sure that we educate the school certifying officials through training webinars. We have a dedicated school certifying official website for, for those individuals to ensure that they have the same knowledge that we have to help our students through their journey. Can you explain a little bit of how the Comary Act has impacted student housing payments for student veterans? So, you know, in terms of the monthly housing allowance and the Comary Act, Comary Act fundamentally changed the way the monthly housing allowance. Prior to the Comary Act, we basically paid the student where the main campus was located versus where the student spent most of his or her time. Now, when the Comary Act came into place, it basically stated VA, you need to pay the student where they spend most of their physical time. So if a student's in the state of California, let's use as an example, 
Their main campus is in Sacramento, but they're spending most of their time in San Francisco, then VA has a responsibility to pay students based off of that location of San Francisco. And I will tell you, that could be a drastic difference. The rate in San Francisco is a little bit over $4,500 versus being in Sacramento, which is about $2,500. So in some cases, that's more money in a student's pocket. Um, we believe this is trying to create an equity amongst where students are attending their courses, so that way they're getting their rates based off of where they're spending most of their time. Okay, Charmaine, so I want to switch gears here a little bit to the COVID-19 situation. You know, this has been affecting all of us uh, over the last few months, and in response to that, there's been recent laws that have been passed. Could you please uh, go into what those laws are? Uh, great question. So in terms of the COVID-19 legislation that's recently come out, so COVID-19 pandemic you know, really started kicking into to, to high gear around uh, March timeframe for us. We noticed that several schools started reaching out to VA to say that we're going to close our physical location and we're going to start operating in an online modality. So when schools did that, basically could have potentially changed the housing allowance for individuals because the online rate for individuals is, is, is less than $1,000 compared to if someone is going to an in-person classroom it would be receiving a different rate. So we, in coordination with Congress and VSOs, we all partnered together to ensure that legislation was passed to protect students and their rates that they were receiving for if they were attending in person. So any student who's attending online right now and impacted by COVID-19, we have the ability to continue to pay them their in-resident rate for those students. That is a significant difference for individuals. And we are very grateful that that legislation has passed. In addition, we saw some other changes come about because of COVID-19. Work study students were affected because they were unable to continue in their work study environment. We had on the job training programs and apprenticeship programs who were unable to continue because you're required to be on site. So Congress also passed additional legislation that allowed us to be able to continue to pay monthly housing allowance for students who were affected by this, where their school closed or their work study site no longer was operating. So that way we can help students during this difficult time. And we again are very happy that that legislation passed and we have moved very swiftly to enact that legislation. Wow, Charmaine, I just gotta say that, that sounds incredible. You know, kudos to you, kudos to our partners for making all of this happen for our, our service members, our, our veterans and their families. Now, you know, here on Transition Talk, we like to break a little bit of news and you've got some news to share with our viewers uh, related to our survivors. Could you go into that? I'm, I'm so happy to, and excited to announce that uh, just in the last month, we have launched a new survivors line. This is a long time coming and it is so needed. We have a dedicated call center in Muskogee, Oklahoma, as I've mentioned before, and we thought it was important since we have specialized benefits for survivors, that it was important to have a dedicated line of highly trained agents to be able to address their concerns. We understand it's not easy to navigate the waters of survivor benefits, whether it's in the education space or just in VA space as a whole in terms of the resources available to individuals. So we've created this line where those agents are able and ready to answer those phone calls right away for those individuals. Okay, Charmaine, so one more question related to COVID-19. So could you go into what other changes VA is making due to the coronavirus pandemic? You know, we've also increased our paperless environment um, in our space. It is important that no matter what's going on, that veterans are able to get their information to us in a timely fashion so we can process their benefits. So we ask that students make sure that they have an updated email address with us. They can either reach out to us directly or go through their school certifying official to update their information. We wanna make sure that we are able to process payments timely. We wanna make sure we're able to process entitlement determinations timely. And we count on you to make sure that we have the right email and contact information um, from students in order to provide that expeditious service. Okay, Charmaine. So I know that you and the team are super busy, but before you go, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? 
You know, I would just say that it's important for, for anyone out there who has any questions about the benefits that are available to them that they reach out to us and they connect with us. It's important that they're connected with all the resources that are out there, whether it be through social media channels, VA official social media channels, or it's through our GI Bill website or our call center. We're dedicated to helping students to make sure that they achieve their educational goals. And we don't know what we don't know. So it's important that we're connected and we stay connected about the issues that's happening so we can continue to provide the best services for our student veterans. Well, Charmaine, thank you so much for being here with us. And I'd like to extend my gratitude to all of the employees of VA Education Service who have been working so tirelessly to provide the education benefits to our service members, veterans, and dependents so they can achieve their higher education goals. And, you know, happy birthday, GI Bill. But also, you know, to all, all of our viewers, thank you for joining us. And if you are a service member, a veteran, military spouse, family member, caregiver, or survivor, thank you for your service. Thank you.